It's really a pleasure and honor for me to be here, certainly to follow Michelangelo also uh, in a presentation, so <clears throat> thank you. So my task is to talk about Sono VCAD, uh, the automation and ultrasound with uh, the new E10 system, especially with the Electronic Pro. First, for disclosure, I am a non-paid consultant to, to General Electric. During this presentation, I will uh, present the concepts of ultrasound automation. I'll give a bit of historical perspectives of where we started and where we are today. I'll show some current advances in 2D and 3D with the new technology. And I'll present to you Sono VCAD on the E10 system. And I'll discuss briefly what I believe will be coming out in the future. So first, with regards to the concepts of automation, uh, with Sono VCAT. Uh, once 3D ultrasound became a reality several years back, it was uh, uh, quickly realized that when you acquire a volume of a structure, such as the fetal chest and upper abdomen, everything that you need to make a comprehensive evaluation of the heart, for instance, is contained within this volume. And it was also realized from early on that for every organ, such as the fetal heart, for instance, all the 2D anatomical planes that you need to make a comprehensive evaluation of the heart is contained within this volume. Not only that, but these planes are organized in a constant anatomic relationship to each other. So we know to go from the fourth chamber view to the pulmonary artery, we tend to slide up in the chest without any rotations. And we know to get the LVOT plane, we have to do some rotation with a slight slide up. So Basically, the concept came to reality that you can obtain a volume of an organ, such as the fetal chest, for instance, and you can create a program that will automatically display all the 2D planes that are required for a complete evaluation of this particular organ. And hence, really, the, begin the beginning of automation in the evaluation of the fetal heart. And the first, uh, our first program that came about was the Sono VCAT that's available on the GE systems with the ability to get a volume of the fetal heart being a 3D static volume or a stick volume and allow the system to retrieve these planes that are the diagnostic planes of the fetal heart. Now, when you talk about automation and ultrasound, really the ultimate goal is to make the examination very simple. I think if we talk about automation that requires the operator to acquire a volume, to rotate the volume and manipulate the volume, that ultimately defeats the purpose in automation. Because where ultrasound will make a huge impact with regards to detection of anomalies rests with the ability of the users to be able to retrieve the complicated planes for a diagnostic evaluation. So if you have a complicated 3D acquisition, if you require multiple steps to get to the planes that you need, or if you need extensive post-processing that defeats the purpose of automation and ultrasound. I think the ultimate goal of automation is to allow the beginning users to be able to retrieve these complicated planes that are required for a comprehensive evaluation. So just some historical perspectives on where we started with automation and ultrasound. The concept started in May 2004, so this is a topic that there has been a lot of work on, where the new approach was presented to the scientific community. Then in April 2005, the standardization of the 3D volumes were performed and described, and how, what are the steps required to standardize the 3D volume. In the initial phases, we need to make sure that the fetal spine is at the six o'clock position in plane A from a multiplanar plane, in a horizontal position in plane B, and a vertical position in plane C. Following this, in 2007, the relationship of the various planes, the spatial relationships were described and reported with regards to going from the four chamber view, which is an entry level plane, to all the other planes were described and defined along the X and the Y and Z axis. And finally, the concept was also evaluated prospectively on uh, multiple planes to assess for the ability of us and the, to maintain consistency in the retrieval of these standard planes to make a diagnosis of fetal cardiac abnormalities. 
other investigators also have evaluated the, the product with regards to the ability to make diagnoses in abnormal fetuses, such as with transposition of the great arteries. An important concept because this is an abnormality that is commonly missed on 2D ultrasound. So, where we are to date with regards to the Sono VCAD before the E10 came about, this was performed on 3D static and stick volumes, primarily because of the limitations we had with the frame rate and the resolution within the volumes. And we were limited by the mechanical aspects of the 3D and 4D probes. Getting to the next level requires multiple steps, in my opinion. Requires advancement in 2D imaging that allows us to obtain high-resolution images in 2D, which will translate into advancement in 3D imaging and required enhanced computer speed and processing. And this is where we are excited with regards to the E10 because it meets a lot of these specifications to allow us to move into the next step. So what are some of the advances in 2D that have been achieved? I think over the past two days, you have seen some of the images that the E10 system can produce. I'm gonna take you through some of those. This is a normal four chamber view. This is a fetus with an atrioventricular septal defect. This is a normal three vessel trachea view. And this is a normal sagittal view of the fetus showing the transverse ductal arch and a portion of the aortic arch. This is a fetus with the tetralogy of Fallot. And this is a fetus with an apical muscular ventricular septal defect that you see at the apex of the heart, clearly visible onto the ultrasound, quite visible on the color uh, Doppler to the ultrasound. This is a fetus with the aortic stenosis. So the quality of 2D has improved significantly. How about advances in 3D imaging? I think you have seen also from the presentation of Bernard and others how you can maintain fairly high uh, frame rates in the electronic uh, 4D probe. Let me show you some examples. This is an e-stick showing you the relationship of the great vessels. This is another e-stick with HD flow. Again, clearly showing the relationship of the great vessels. This is a sagittal view showing you the cardiac uh, flow, the venous system, and the aortic arch. And this is in a glass body mode, and this is without the glass body mode. See the ductus venosus there with the bit of aliasing in the color. And this is the heart showing the systole and diastole, showing inflow into the ventricles and outflow through the great vessels. This is the same fetus with the tetralogy of Fallot that I showed you earlier on the E stick with color flow. And this is the same fetus with aortic stenosis. This is a 4D real time with a fetus with the AV canal, showing you the view of the valves straight in. The detection of, of flow is also highly improved. This is uh, the placenta from the maternal and the fetal surface, showing you the extensive vascularity in different color modes. So what about Sono VCAD? on the E10. Now with these advances, we can really move to the next step. And the next step is really the ability of the electronic transducer to acquire volumes with such clarity within and with a frame rate that allow us to get close to near automation. So what we have with the new probe and the new system is an enhanced 2D, 3D, and 4D imaging. There's now a separate platform for Sono VCAD given its importance and relevance to what we do. 
we have the ability for the first time really to perform automation on real-time 4D volumes. And there's extensive options for post-processing in a very, very simple way. So Sono VCAD has its own plate platform on the system. It has the same flow with the ability to obtain a volume and then requires one rotation to align the apex of the heart along the graphics, as you see. And once you've aligned the volume, whether in real time or in a static mode or in an e-stick mode, then you can go through the cardiac planes one to six that brings out all the planes that you need for a comprehensive evaluation of the fetal heart. So here's a volume that is, uh, this is a, the real-time volume. As you see, this is in 4D real-time that is oriented in the right orientation. This is cardiac one, which corresponds to the left ventricular outflow track. And the ability to provide a multiple tomographic imaging allows you to really detect the most optimal one and also allows you to adjust for variability in fetal position. Cardiac two is the RVOT, the right ventricular outflow track. So it goes into the three vessel trachea view in the middle and it goes into the three vessel view towards the top. Cardiac three is the plane in the stomach that you primarily look at the location of the stomach to confirm situs. Cardiac four is the parasagittal plane looking at the inferior and superior vena cava coming into the right atrium. Cardiac five is the ductal arch and you see it in plane minus three and minus two. And cardiac six is the aortic arch and you see that relationship in the top planes also. This is a fetus with the tetralogy of Fallot, and this is uh, cardiac one showing you the left ventricular outflow track. You can see the aortic override clearly, and in the same fetus, the pulmonary artery, and you see the presence of pulmonary stenosis in relation to the aortic size of the aortic isthmus. You can apply the same concepts in 4D real-time volumes or actually in e-stick. This is e-stick with HD flow. And from there, you can go into, I chose here cardiac 2 and cardiac 4, the, R, the RVOT and the uh, inferior and superior vena cava coming into the right atrium, and the ductal and aortic arch in these views. Now, you can also choose to do this in a single plane display, as you see right here. So you can actually go through the different cardiac planes within one plane rather than having a TUI mode that allows you to look at various options. So what are some future horizons that we're exciting will be uh, hopefully coming out soon is our ability to get to where true automation is. As you can see, we're very close to that. And this is, in my opinion, a step-free full automation of the cardiac exam. And the hope is while you are scanning at the level of the four-chamber view with the E4D uh, transducer, without moving your hand, you can get all the cardiac planes displayed on the monitor for you. And that the ability to do this is really based on the ability to acquire volumes in real time in such frame rate and clarity that you are able to complete the exam from the level of the four-chamber view. And in my opinion, that would be really the, the ultimate place to be, which would allow the beginning users to be able to do a comprehensive evaluation of the fetal heart. Thank you very much for your attention.